Real Housewives of Orange County Recap, The New Abnormal. Last night's Real Housewives of Orange County redefined Naked Wasted. It was the Golden Girls meets The Hangover and Tamara Judge baptized herself in tequila and got a broken foot for her sins. I apologize in advance if this recap makes no sense I guzzled two glasses of wine to cope with the second hand embarrassment of all the shenanigans and now I feel like Tamara in a hot tub at 2 am. Completely lacking in judgment and doing a slip and sad reminiscent of an 80s rock video back when MTV and Tamra were young and their misbehavior funny. It's always nice when The Rock take us out of the church to remind us that no housewife, no matter how much she protests, can never truly turn her back on her satanic impulses. Where there be tequila. There be whoop it up and a turn to temptation that delivers Tamara straight back to evil. There's a certain relief in such consistency, but I applaud Tamara for trying to pretend she wants to do the right thing, no I don't. I'm over her fake Christian routine, although I am glad she has Eddie whom she seems to sincerely love and cherish. Speaking of two-faced, Vicky Gunn also just can't help herself. Just as she's betraying Kelly Dodd in the most obviously obvious way possible by going on a double date with Kelly's ex, then pretending she's never heard of this thing called Girl Code, the true Bible of Bravo, Vicky cries in a sombrero with empathy over Sean and Bedore's divorce. Kelly is the new Shannon and Vicky's bonehead move in an attempt to appease Steve's friendship with Michael, cause Vicky will always stand by her man at the expense of her more loyal girlfriend, means we're going to be reliving this Kelly, Vicky fight for the next three seasons until I'd almost welcome the return of Brooks just for some different demons. Anyway, it's a cold day in hell because I agree with Tamara that Vicky knew she was being sneaky when she set Michael up and the reason she's so defensive about Kelly's reaction is because she's well aware that she was wrong. Kelly is an emotional mess as she tells Tamara about Vicky's betrayal, clearly expectant Tamara to turn on Vicky, but Tamara still goes to Puerto Vallarta. Because she's contractually obligated, but also because a whoop it up is a whoop it up and who is Tamara to have principles and morals? Even if the so-called new Vicky is still wearing the same old two-faced sombrero. In the category of definitely not Kelly's friend is her 12-year-old daughter, Jolie. Kelly reads aloud Vicky's shitty apology text and Jolie simply reminds her mom that friends don't go behind your back but furthermore God doesn't want people to be fake. What I take that to mean is that God doesn't want people to be real housewives. Further proof being that a tween has more relationship savvy than a 45-year-old and a 55-year-old combined. This is your brain on Bravo. 
kids. No wonder Jolie wants to go to boarding school if only to escape that crumbling 80s apartment. In the car on the way to the airport at least Tamra had the decency to call Vicky out and she acknowledged that double dating with Michael without telling Kelly even if Michael asked her not to was the wrong move. Tamara is sympathetic to the fact that Steve and Michael are still friends, and again, Tamara, an expert in both betrayal and bad ex wife Adam, is correct that Vicky should encourage Steve to have his own relationship with Michael while she stays out of it. After all, that's what she's doing with Eddie and David who are strapping on their spandex bike shorts and rolling around in the mud together in the name of fitness. And still, Shannon is mad. Except Vicky's life code is FOMO, so she'd never be able to gracefully extract herself from anything. Let's take a moment to discuss that bizarre spy commercial starring Vicky and Tamra as so-called best friends playing pop the boob implants balloons with a laser gun to figure out some movie clue. The answer was obviously Alexis Jesus Jugs Bellino, so don't listen to whatever Mila Kunis had to say. In Mexico, Shannon ships her kids back to the States so she can get her granny panties out of their bunch and properly whoop it up. After filling their suitcase with the nanny cam she used to trap David, healing crystals, a soda defibrillator, and 99 lemons, Shannon prepares to the next phase in her get single cat iron by ordering three double shots and to greet the arrival of Tamara and Vicky. This momentous occasion marks the return of the three Hemigas, a troop of geriatric fun bus conductresses on a mission to wreck themselves before they check themselves, into the hospital. Literally. Within seconds Shannon and Vicky have crashed to the ground in a flood of tequila, lime, and broken good intentions. It was a shot ski, sombrero, Shannon sandwich and I'm guessing it wasn't Vicky's fault at all. Nothing ever is. Also. Shannon made Vicky pee her pants. This entire trip was a calamity of people falling and flopping and being in denial about both their age and their physical abilities. Just because you teach aerobics or tumble off a bench during a suburban fitness ropes course, or bend and tuck to pick up dog poop while wearing stilettos, doesn't mean you're equipped for the tequila drinking and hot tub diving of a spring breaker. I suppose nothing rebonds a mistrustful friend like nearly killing yourself over tequila, because thus began a literal marathon of shots followed by the many faces of a possessed Beetlejuice. 15 in all. Predictably they wind up at Vicky's Mecca and Ales, a debauched cesspool of the failed dreams of Vicky's early 20s. Did that place get worse in the years since Bravo last visited? It's like the chicken or the egg did and ales get trashier because of Bravo, or was it always trashy F? Because now there is a woman blowing gym coach whistles in your face while you take shots, then grabbing your boobs. 
How do you say sexual harassment in Spanish? Bravo segues away from all this debauchery for us to join Gina Kefley of Lofla Kefleinheimer Schernomio and Emily Simpson at Stroller Size, some sort of suburban fitness nightmare that involves small children crashing into their mothers while they try to exercise, then being fed donuts and candy. Gina and Emily, much like their names, could not be more opposite. For some odd reason, Emily's children were dressed in business casual wear, while Gina's were wearing whatever smelled cleanish. Gina's behave though, while she seamlessly squats and set tops, and sprints, while Gina complains that her children are so bad she needs therapy and medication to cope. Yet she still wants another one? Meanwhile, Gina is super mommy, with totally bionic laser vision, I imagine. Back in Mexico Tamara is ready wants to go full throttle. Which are famous last words, especially considering that last time she went full throttle she crashed a dune buggy and nearly killed off her friend group. This time Tamara nearly killed off her fitness career by diving into a thought tub at 2 a.m. David is gonna have to start teaching classes at cuts since both Tamara and Duddy are down for the count with injuries and ailments. But first, there is drunken dancing on the bar where Tamra flashes her pasties at all the poor patrons using tequila as eye bleach. What would Sydney Jesus think? Vicky promised Steve she'd be good though because as he helpfully reminded her she is a grandmother after all. wise words, my friend, and he didn't need a Hallmark card to convey them. Shannon protests that she is classic and old school. Sexy is for the 30-year-olds dating David, apparently. 